Today is another bright new day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice in it and be glad in it as we study His Word. And like always, we're going to be explaining another often confusing question. So I hope you've got a pen, a paper, and your Bible. And let's get started. What is the validity of marriage in today's world? What is the validity of marriage in today's world? <laughs> I'm sure you've heard people say, marriage is a sucker belt. You know, it's a sucker's belt. If you get married, you will regret it within five years. Don't do it. And the man you marry won't be the same man that uh, you will bury. Because they change over time. Such gloomy statements abound in a jaded world filled with marriage skeptics. And many young people are dismayed by such naysaying. Some may even shy away from pursuing marriage. But all the above statements are bad advice. Marriage is just as valid today as it ever was. Hebrews 13 verse 4. It says, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bad undefiled. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, this, the, the, the cynical quotation that I've just given you uh, minutes ago is uh, that one and many others, they are striking in their inherent selfishness. And the advice that these people give they encapsulate would have married only if marriage were intended solely to gratify one's personal desires but that's not the purpose of marriage the marriage vow is not a lifetime is not only just a lifetime commitment to be loved or to receive love but marriage is a vow to give love it is a promise to give love for life. It is a determination to give life. Uh, I mean, I mean to give love and to live for the benefit of the other person. To stand by and uh, behind each other. To give and give and give and then give some more and give even life itself. Even more fundamentally, uh, mankind did not invent marriage. God did when 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 uh, when God made ma uh, mankind or humankind, male and female, and and uh, brought the first couple together in marriage, He had a purpose in mind. The most basic purpose was that marriage would produce more people who bear God's name, reflect His image, and subdue the earth. Genesis one twenty six to twenty eight. It tells us that. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fall of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every keep creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. And so God made man and woman. And of course, Genesis 2, uh, 22, downwards it says, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh she shall be called a woman because she was taken out of a man therefore man will leave his wife and uh, you know will leave his parents <laughs> and will be joined to uh, the wife and two shall become one you know the story so furthermore to, to properly and fully reflect the image of God mankind must be constituted of both men and women Genesis 127 it says so God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him male and female created he them male is not alone <laughs> no he didn't create man alone because man alone is not whole, neither is female. And the proper reflection of God's character in mankind requires both genders, man and woman, 
united in marriage and marriage is about uh, much more than romantic uh, bliss is not is not just about uh, sexual pleasure it is the commitment of marriage which is all about reflecting god's character unity and fellowship and this explains why the apostle paul describes christian marriage in such a lofty spiritual term as we find in uh, Ephesians 22 uh, down to uh, 33 let me just read to you this because i think it's really really important the bible says Ephesians 5:22 wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord for the husband is the head of the wife even as the church is the head uh, even as christ sorry is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body Therefore as the church is subject unto Christ let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything and uh, husbands love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and uh, gave himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word that he might present it to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but that uh, it should be holy and without blemish so ought men to to love their wives as their own bodies he that loveth his wife loves himself for no man has ever hated his own flesh but nourishes it and cherishes it even as the lord uh, does to the church for we are members of his body and of his flesh and of his bones for this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and uh, shall be joined unto his wife and the two shall be one flesh and this is a great mystery but i speak concerning the church and christ nevertheless let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverences her husband look at such beautiful uh, blessings there and uh, promises It is not in discovering the most beautiful model or the most dashing knight that a good marriage is found. It is recognizing God's uh, plan and prepared uh, the, 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 the God's prepared choice for the most suitable life partner, the the, the one that most com- is most compatible with God's purposes and objectives. That is where true marriage is built. Romance surely has its place and it will be enjoyed in a godly marriage but only as a fruit of a much deeper stronger relationship Absolutely we understand the honeymoon will end that's true yes both the husband and the wife will prove to be somewhat different from what they presented uh, to each other while courting yes sooner or later both spouses will be disappointed in something about one another and yes trials will come testing of strength the strength of their vows will will come that time but uh, none of that changes the fact that god has good idea when he invented marriage and one major element that the critics of marriage always miss is faith marriage and family are god's institutions for mar- mankind if a christian is truly working with god truly wanting god's uh, best for his or her spouse truly wanting to further god's plan for himself for his spouse and for the world then he will not abandon the idea of marriage it's not about what we get out of marriage it's uh, not the takers of the world who find fulfillment but the givers those who by god's grace emulate Uh, the self-sacrificial giving of Christ therefore growing in his image the Bible tells us in Romans um, 28 it tells us this and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them that are called according to his purpose for whom did he foreknow he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the first born among many and also Ephesians 4:20 tells us but you have not so learned Christ if so be that uh, you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth in Jesus 
that you puff off concerning the former conversations of the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts and be renewed by the transforming of your mind are you seeing this one so a good marriage will uh, cost everything we have and in that giving we will find the highest meaning of life in Christ and none of this means that every believer must marry because God knows that it is better for someone not to marry and that some situations make marriage undesirable of course you can go in and uh, see 1 Corinthians chapter 7 it will give you a good picture of that so what's the conclusion for those who do marry it is important to have an understanding of what god intends marriage to be we should not allow the sad experiences and negativity of others to deter us from trusting god and giving uh, our marriage all the effort needed because this one it truly exalts god when you do the right thing and a godly marriage can fulfill god's purposes and provide a husband and a wife a lifetime of opportunities to bless each other and their family in the name of jesus christ and friends at the end of our today's bible study lesson hope it was a blessing to you hope you've learned something you can always download this podcast uh, to listen later offline or to uh, share to your friends and family and please don't forget to favorite our channel and also subscribe so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new podcast otherwise if you would like to learn more about our ministry and uh, many other things and also support us please do so at the at the website uh, keithmoki.com please go there and check out what we have otherwise i hope to see you soon in the next one